Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about top 10 golden facts about Pahlavi dynasty. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. The Imperial State of Iran also known as the Imperial State of Persia from 1925 to 1935, was a sovereign state in Western Asia which was bordered by Turkey and Iraq to the west, the Soviet Union to the north Afghanistan, and Pakistan to the east and shared a maritime border with Oman toward the south. With a population of 37 million in 1979, Tehran served as its capital city. It was ruled by the Pahlavi dynasty, the last ruling house of Iran, from 1925 until 1979, when the Persian monarchy was overthrown and abolished as a result of the Iranian Revolution. The Pahlavis came to power after Ahmad Shah Qajar, the last Qajar ruler of Iran, proved unable to stop British and Soviet encroachment on Iranian sovereignty, had his position extremely weakened by a military coup, and was removed from power by the parliament while in France. The Iranian parliament, known as the Majlis, convening, as a constituent assembly on 12 December 1925, deposed the young Ahmad Shah Qajar, and declared Reza Khan the new king, Shah, of Imperial State of Persia. In 1935, Reza Shah asked foreign delegates to use the Endanum Iran in formal correspondence, and the official name the Imperial State of Iran was adopted. The Pahlavi dynasty is an Iranian royal dynasty of Mazandarani ethnicity. The Pahlavi dynasty originated in Mazandaran province. In 1878 Reza Shah Pahlavi was born at the village of Alasht in Savadku County, Mazandaran province. His parents were Abbas Ali Khan and Nushafran Eromlo. His mother was a Muslim immigrant from Georgia, then part of the Russian Empire, whose family had emigrated to mainland Persia, after Persia was forced to cede all of its territories in the Caucasus, following the Russo-Persian Wars several decades prior to Reza Shah's birth. In 1925, Reza Khan, a former brigadier general of the Persian Cossack Brigade, deposed the Qajar dynasty and declared himself King, Shah, adopting the dynastic name of Pahlavi, which recalls the Middle Persian language of the Sasanian Empire. By the mid-1930s, Reza Shah's strong secular rule caused dissatisfaction among some groups, particularly the clergy, who opposed his reforms, but the middle and upper middle class of Iran liked what Reza Shah did. Here are some progresses of Iran during Pahlavi dynasty. Number 10. Rise of Reza Khan. Until the beginning of World War I, Russia effectively ruled Iran, but, with the outbreak of hostilities, Russian troops withdrew from the north of the country and Iranians convened the Third Marj Les. Jubilation was short-lived, however, as the country quickly turned into a battlefield between British, German, Russian, and Turkish forces. The landed elite hoped to find in Germany a foil for the British and Russians, but change eventually was to come from the north. Iran claimed to be a neutral country during the opening years of World War II. In April 1941, the war reached Iran's borders when Rashid Ali, with assistance from Germany and Italy, launched the 1941 Iraqi coup d'etat, sparking the Anglo-Iraqi War of May 1941. Germany and Italy quickly sent the pro-Axis forces in Iraq military aid from Syria, but during the period from May to July the British and their allies defeated the pro-Axis forces in Iraq and later Syria and Lebanon. Number 9. Educational and Judicial Reforms. During the reign of Reza Shah Pahlavi, educational and judicial reforms were effected, that laid the basis of a modern state and reduced the influence of the religious classes. A wide range of legal affairs that had previously been the purview of Shi religious courts were, now either administered by secular courts or overseen by state bureaucracies, and, as a result, the status of women improved. The custom of women wearing veils was banned, the minimum age for marriage was raised, and strict religious divorce laws, which invariably favored the husband, were made more equitable. The number and availability of secular schools increased for both boys and girls, and the University of Tehran was established in 1934, further eroding what had once been a clerical monopoly on education. Nonetheless, Reza Shah was selective on what forms of modernization and secularization he would adopt. He banned trade unions and political parties and firmly muzzled the press. Oil concessions were first granted in 1901, during the Kaja period, and the first commercially exploitable petroleum deposits were found in 1908. Reza Shah renegotiated a number of these concessions, despite the ire these agreements raised among the Iranian people. The concessions were to remain a violent point of contention in Iran for decades to come. 
At the end of the war, Soviet troops remained in Iran, and established two puppet states in northwestern Iran, namely the People's Government of Azerbaijan and the Republic of Mahabad. This led to the Iran Crisis of 1946, one of the first confrontations of the Cold War, which ended, after oil concessions were promised to the USSR, and Soviet forces withdrew from Iran proper in May 1946. The two puppet states were soon overthrown and the oil concessions were later revoked. Number 8. Democracy in Iran. Reza Shah sought to democratize Iran and emancipate it from foreign interference. His foreign policy involved playing the Soviet Union off against Great Britain, until they joined forces against the Germans and occupied Iran in August 1941. He abdicated, enabling his son to adopt a policy, appropriate, to the situation and preserve the Pahlavi dynasty. Number 7. Regeneration of Iran. Reza Shah cherished the idea of regenerating the Iranian nation, and leading it on the path of progress. After his coronation in April 1926, he continued the radical reforms he had embarked on while prime minister, such as breaking the power of the tribes, curbing foreign interference, and emancipating women. Mohammad Reza Pahlavi replaced his father on the throne on 16 September 1941. He wanted to continue the reform policies of his father, but a contest for control of the government soon erupted between him and an older professional politician, the nationalistic Mohammad Mossada. Major plans to build Iran's infrastructure were undertaken, a new middle class began flourishing and in less than two decades Iran became the indisputable major economic and military power of the Middle East. Number 6. Reunification of Iran. The Pahlavi rule was instrumental in Iran's nationalization, in line with Persian culture and language which, among other ways, was achieved through the official ban on the use of minority languages such as Azerbaijani and successful suppression of separatist movements. Reza Pahlavi is credited for reunification of Iran under a powerful central government. The use of minority languages in schools and newspapers was not tolerated. The succeeding regime, the Islamic Republic of Iran, has adopted a more inclusive approach in relation to the use of ethnic minorities and their language, however the issues as to Azeris, the Iran's largest ethnic minority, remain and pose considerable challenges for the unity and territorial integrity of Iran. Number 5. Human Rights. During the imperial state of Iran, Reza Shah Pahlavi and his son Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi employed secret police, torture, and executions to stifle political dissent. The Pahlavi dynasty has sometimes been described as a royal dictatorship or one-man rule. According to one history of the use of torture by the state in Iran, abuse of prisoners varied at times during the Pahlavi reign. Number 4. Corruption. As Ganji writes, the group submitted at least 30 solid reports within 13 years on a corruption of high-ranking officials and the royal circle, but Shah called the reports false rumors and fabrications. Parvis Sabeti, a high-ranking official of SAVAK believed that the one important reason for successful opposition to the regime was corruption. Number 3. Pahlavi strengthened Iran. After centuries of misrule and a war waged on its soil in 1914-19, Iran was ruined and on the verge of disintegration. Reza Shah Pahlavi's actions to strengthen and reconstitute Iran under a strong government, bolstered by a disciplined military, were largely successful, after he gathered the reins of power during the early 1920s. Number 2. Named Persia as Iran. The Pahlavi dynasty took power over what was then Persia, in 1925 through a coup orchestrated by Reza Shah Pahlavi. Reza Shah was the dynasty's first leader and would pass power on to his son Mohammad Reza in 1941. Mohammad Reza was under great influence from the Western powers. He changed Persia's name officially to Iran, which was what these Western powers already called Persia at the time. Number 1. Social and Economic Reforms. He developed the newly discovered oil industry in Iran for the US and UK use. With all the new income from oil the Iranian government, greatly increased their infrastructure in education and welfare. Mohammad Reza also started the White Revolution in 1963, which were wide-reaching social and economic reforms. Thanks to these reforms Iranian women voted for the first time in 1963, and even more money was put into education, especially in rural areas. These socio-economic reforms did not please everyone however. Iranian people felt increasingly drowned in foreign Western ideals and became angry with the Shah. Among those angered were the vast majority of the clergy, who were often conservative Islamic leaders as well. 
along with the fact that many of the white revolution's economic reforms were backfiring, and creating an increasing gap between the poor and elites, a very hostile feeling between the Iranian people and the Shah was created. Small protests broke out and when they were met with gunfire and violence from the Shah's government the protests grew exponentially. The Iranian revolution had begun and as protests got too large Mohammad Reza had no other choice but to flee Iran in 1978 leading to the collapse of the Pahlavi dynasty. What do you think of our list? Which of the facts about Pahlavi dynasty shocked you the most? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.